Right, Alan, you're going to kick us off in our top five challenge of the day, which is to to name the, the best five players ever, as simple as that. The, the, the same names uh, seem to be appearing, but in different order. So this is what you've gone for, Alan. Who would be your number one? And, and, and how difficult was it for you? Well, it is difficult. I mean, we're all going to put Messi and Ronaldo in, aren't we? Of course. And how do you compare different eras, different generations? It, it's difficult. But those two... The longevity as much as anything else, you know, the number of years they've played at the very top and at the very top of their respective games, you know, and the goal output has just been staggering. The fact, you know, all the best players don't get injured. And there's a bit of luck involved in that, of course, isn't there as well? You know, you have to have the right muscle type, the right bone type. But, you know, they've not they've not missed many matches at all over the course of their careers always been available to the manager. But just two outstanding players with magnificent attitudes. I put Messi there because maybe he's a little bit more of a team player. I don't know. It, it's so tough. Ronaldo was watching that documentary last night. You know, his drive, his determination never, never stands still. That's what you've got to have. That's what Messi's obviously got as well. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Graham, I, I want to have a look at yours as well because... Uh, I suppose I was su quite surprised when I, when I saw it, you know, thinking of, of someone who's who's been watching football for for a long time and played against some of these guys as well. Uh, can we see Graham's? Yeah, ahead of you know the likes of Maradona and Pele, you put those two top of the tree as well. Yeah, you know, Smudge mentioned it, longevity, the leagues they've played in. You know, I think you know. I said to my son as a football nut, I said, enjoy this. I've been saying it for ten years. The players like this don't come along with every generation. They are so far ahead of who's... If you think in the last 10 years, who's been the third best player in the world? A good bit, you know, are way behind those two. They are, you know, they're off the charts for me. And I, you talk about consistency, you talk about goal scoring, you talk about the assists, you know, the, 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 the thing they bring to the team, you know, the confidence they would bring to whatever team they're playing in. And I just think they have been so far ahead of anybody else um, you know, there's an argument. Would Messi and Ronaldo going back generations on a bobbly pitch would have been so effective because they both run with the ball? Diego Maradona could do that, couldn't he? Um, Diego, you know, seemed to have his personal problems at a, at a time when he should have been enjoying his best years. Um, then there's Pelly. Pelly, for me, as I understand it, this, this Brazilian football, it's regional, so he won a lot of league and scored a lot of goals in a lesser competition. Then he went off to America to play again, a lesser competition. Um, I think Zidane, for me, I just got so much pleasure in watching Zidane. You know, we were doing a game, Sky were doing a game, it was just like a semi-final of the Champions League in Barcelona. And and that fitness fanatic and I, Jeff Cherise, were in the gym. And um, <laughs> this guy walked in. And he was a giant. I don't, uh, Jamie Smudge, I don't know, Smudge still does it. Have you ever been in his company? He must be six foot four, Zidane. And anyway, he was in. I played was, against him, was, yeah. He was in the gym for an hour and just walked around on his phone and walked out. He didn't do anything. Uh, in fact, he did that little. Jeff, Jeff looked like a workaholic in, in comparison. <laughs> I was going to say, what was he doing there? <laughs> 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 and then, and then. You know, I, I've written down here, I've got to mention George Best, because George Best was, for a very short period of time, up there with the ones we're talking about. I, I mentioned the word longevity. He didn't, he didn't do it. And then, and I've got to mention this one as well. There's a player, this is not me because I didn't see him play, but Bill Shankly, Bob Paisley, Joe Fagan would say, if you ask them, who was the best player, best British player, and they'd go further and say, no, Call him the best in the world was Sir Tom Finney. Now, i never seen him play, but they reckon he was just unbelievable. He could play anywhere along the front, play him in midfield, and if he got injured, they wouldn't announce it at Preston because no one would turn up if he wasn't playing. So he, you know, <laughs> if there's any older guys watching the programme and they've, they've seen a lot of Tom Finney, I'm sure they would want to involve him. And I've got to say, just to finish, sorry, Jamie, I'm dragging on a bit. The two best midfield players... I played against, but it's, it's a goal scorer. I know we've got Zidane in there, but the best two midfield players I played against, one was Zico, another one was a guy called Paul Breitner, who played for Bayern Munich. And they, they were players that were, you know, you just couldn't get near them. They were just 
Well, you could get near Brighton, you couldn't get near Seiko. But Bright Brighton was sensational for Bayern Munich in Germany. I want to ask you, uh, though, Graham, before we move on to Jamie, about playing against Maradona, which you did on a handful of occasions, I believe, yeah. in Italy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was... <laughs> what can you say? You know, you, you, you could make contact with him because he ran with the ball, but seriously bounced off him. I mean, he was all there. If you look up as a young man, you know, he was, he was extremely powerful, not tall, extremely powerful. And like with all these geniuses, all the very best players, they get their weight in the right place when they know the challenge is coming. And, you know, I, I, was, I was a decent size as a midfield player, but I, was, I used to bounce off him. You know, you think you've got him here and you end up on the floor and he's, you know, dancing in between you. Um, but he was a sensational player. But unfortunately for him, you know, when he should have been his very, very best, he um, had, his, had his issues. So that's why, you know, if he, had, if he, had, if he could have avoided that, you know, he might have been top of the tree. And again, you've got, to, you've got to. There's no way you can avoid it. You've got to factor in that in those days the rules were different. The pitches weren't as good, so the pitches weren't so good. They had to take extra touches that Messi and Ronaldo don't have to today. And and he still got his passes off and still went on these 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 runs he used to make. And of course, the very best one, as I see it, was the one against England. And, and I just can't for the life of me understand why you'd keep harping on. They handballed that ball into the net for a Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie, who's top of your tree? Uh, tomorrow, uh, my, I mean, I love a list. I've spent all weekend changing my mind. The only one that hasn't changed is number one. For me, it has to be Pele. I mean, he's the only man to win three World Cups. As a 17-year-old in the first World in 1958, he scored one in the in the quarterfinals, a hat trick in the semi final, and two in the final as a 17 year old. So for me, he transcended football. Yeah, he got. I think people talk about a lot of his goals were scored in exhibition games, but that for me just sets him apart. World Cups, as you know, I've read books on him. When he talked to the Brazilians, he was the man. You know, he's, he is out, the most outstanding footballer for me. Anybody, you know, look at YouTube. Young kids, go watch him. He had a little bit of Ronaldo 9 in him. Some of his athleticism, his header that he used to leap at the back post. Just an absolute superstar in, in every way. My dad played against him and, and just said he was, you know, so good. Such a, And then also very unassuming, uh, just a really nice guy. Number two was difficult because, you know, you've got your, your Messi-Maradona debate. I've gone with Maradona, and I think because and the lads have touched on it, the, the rule changes. There was a, there's a stat in 82 when, when Maradona played against Gentile for Italy. It was 24 times he fouled him before he was booked Gentile. Now, that's what you were able to do to players then. And my vision of Maradona playing growing up when I fell in love with football was him not just evading tackles, he was hurdling tackles. People trying to not just t like to tackle him, to hurt him, to sometimes even break his leg. And what he did in 86 with that Argentinian team, which was a decent team, but he made them win the, he made them win the World Cup pretty much single-handedly. Went to Napoli and nobody, uh, Napoli have not won the league since, not, you know, didn't win it before and they won it twice with him and he took that team to another level. And I also love the rascal gene that he had. He was such a, you know, you can't imagine what he used to get up to and then he'd still go and produce performances like that. Messi, Ronaldo, I mean, what can you say? There's nothing you can say. There's no more superlatives. You can talk about those guys. They are absolutely wonderful footballers. But the question mark will always be, you know, when in that era when you could intimidate, when you could kick people, when the pitches weren't as good, it was a totally different game. Zidane, who I played against, was just... He was just an artist. He was so talented, so easy on the eye. Um, like Graham said, he was a big guy. And the, the thing that really struck me was how big his feet were. And I was thinking, looking, how can you control the ball so beautifully with feet that big? But he used to just, everywhere you went, he'd move it away from you and he just glided onto the pitch and was so talented. But, you know, again, playing against Ronaldo in a very early age, and I remember talking to Sir Alex Ferguson about him. I was playing for Tottenham at the time and, and you could just see there was greatness there. And a lot of people were saying he's a showboater. He's, you know, he just does step overs for the sake of it. But you didn't have to be a, a football genius to realise this guy was going to go and be a great player. And, and Alex Ferguson said after the game, he'll be one of the best ever. And he's right. He was right. You know, he knew that. He worked with him. He'd seen his work ethic. But um, a great list. You know, it really is. And I can't wait to see what everyone else thinks because everyone's going to have their view. Everyone's going to say, how can you put Maradona ahead of Messi? 
but it's all individual opi- opinions. But for me, number one we has all... to be Pele. Three World Cup wins. Jamie, we always talk about attack-minded players, don't we? And I always think defenders get shortchanged a little bit because how, how do you compare an attacker to a centre-half or whatever? That's why I did put Franz Beckenbauer in there, somebody growing up in the 70s, you know, and even the 80s when I was playing, if a defender grabbed the ball and dribbled into midfield, we say, you know, who do you think you are? Beckenbauer. He, he was kind of one mm. on his own. That ball-playing centre-half, Graham obviously would have come across him a lot more than I did. But uh, it, it, they do get shortchanged, but it's easier to destroy them to create. And I think that's why the boys that we've mentioned are, are top of the list. But that's, I thought I'd just give a, a defender a little mention now. I've just got this picture awesome. slides. Can you see this? Look at this picture. This is one of the great wow. pictures. I've yeah, just, I, brilliant. I'm, not, I'm yet to hang. I need to change the frame. But that from when you talk about defenders... And great men, the maestro yeah. Bobby Moore. And then you've got Pele there. I mean, and that was the thing. When you actually look at Pele, I, I think Bobby Moore, I remember, I think he was about six one, maybe not even six foot, my dad said. But look at Pele, considering how good he was in the air, he actually wasn't that tall. But that's one of my favourite pictures, yeah. sportsmanship and everything there. Two absolute legends. Alan, yeah, I was going to ask you about um, had... the, the Maradona oh. Messi comparison. I've, because... I've just smashed it, but anyway, that doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 because because Jamie said, uh, you know, quite rightly that in '86 Maradona inspired Argentina to the World Cup. Would that be the one thing that we would say that goes against Messi that he hasn't managed to do that? Yeah, everybody's looking for the top players to perform when it matters most on the top stage. Um, he, he's had some criticism, hasn't he, for, for from within Argentina for his performances. They feel sometimes it sounds like that he, he gives more to Barcelona than he has to the to the national team. Uh, it sometimes you can be a little unlucky that you go into a tournament when your team's not in the best form, best frame of mind. Uh, but there's no doubt in Messi's talent or desire to do well. But Maradona, he just managed to grab tournaments by the scruff of the neck, didn't he? And and, and dominate them. Um, totally different character to Messi, who's more level-headed. Most people are compared to Maradona, but um, two fantastic Argentinians. Smart. What would you say on that? I don't I understand why, why you say it's a very obvious thing to say you're not winning the World Cup so you're not as, as good as the other guy. But what you've got to factor in, you know, a striker relies on what? A striker relies on, on service. He can't go back to the goalkeeper and get off the goalkeeper and, and go and score a goal. And so, on. so he's, a, he's, he's relying on his teammates. And I would suggest that maybe Maradona's, sorry, Messi's Argentinian teams have not, not been the standard of the past. And I think you've got what to... What about Maradona's at, Napoli team? Yeah, they had good players as what well. About? If you're, if they had really good players. But I, what I was going to say about Messi is, you know, every fortnight you see Messi playing against players he would play against in World Cups. And he makes he makes outstanding defenders, world-class defenders, look as if got the, sh- the bootlaces tied together. He, I mean, he bamboozles them. How many times do you see him sitting really classy defenders on their backsides, you know, with the way he turns, the way he swivels, he drops his shoulder. And I think... That's how you should be judging Messi. He can do it against the very best. Everyone's tried to come up with a way of stopping him. And, and it's very, very difficult. Very, very few people come up with a plan to, you know, to, to stop him being creative and, and stop scoring goals. And I think that's how you should judge him. If you were saying he did do it on the big stage, which is the Champions League, that argument would stand up. But for me, whether it's... Forget the competition you're calling it. It's a World Cup, Champions League. Yeah. They're playing against the very best players on a regular basis and regularly making the best defenders look like amateurs. Uh, what it, Dave, listen, it's all subjective and it's going to cause... Uh, load, everyone's going to have a view on it, and rightly so. And every, you know, I've seen... I remember some of the Champions League nights, Graham, where we'd see Messi and we'd look at each other and go, how on earth has he done that? How on earth has he managed to beat those players and bend one in the corner? And just geniuses. But... All of them are, all of our lists. And I think that's the beauty of it. And everyone's going to have their view. And, you know, some people look at the Champions League now. He's bigger than, obviously, World Cups. Messi, um, 
you know, Ronaldo, I think if you spoke to Gary and Jamie, they, and I, th I think Gary Neville would probably say Ronaldo would be number one for him because obviously he played with him. So we all have our view of playing against players and seeing what they're like up close. And yeah, I love it. And I can't wait to see what everyone thinks of their list as well. Well, you're right. Everyone else has got their own view. Brian Marshall is asking, where is Georgie Best on all these lists? Graham? Well, I, I did mention George. And there's no doubt about it. George had the kind of ability we're talking about that Ronaldo, Ronaldo and Messi and Pelé had. I mean, and again, you know, you look at some of the pitches that George would be playing on and he'd run past foot people. You know, he, he, had, he had all the ability these guys had. But... Again, I come back to. It. I think you got. A, am I wrong and right in thinking? Wrong or right in thinking? You got a factor in the longevity. You know, George. Am I right in saying that maybe 24, 25, George's best days were mine? You know, where Messi and Ronaldo. It's been the best part of twelve years. They've been number number ones yes, playing in a very difficult league. You know, George went off to America and played and played in that league, which wouldn't, you know, wouldn't have tested them greatly. But, you know, George had his demons as well, as we know. But there's no doubt about it. If you were starting and you say, right, all these players on a clean piece of paper, they're going to all live the same. They're, you know, they're going to play at the same, the same leagues. You've got, a, you, you, you might be talking about George Best being number one. You might be talking about Maradona being number one instead of Messi and Ronaldo. There's no doubt about it. George Best. George Best was up there in terms of ability, bravery, and and just an all-round superstar. But unfortunately, we didn't see we didn't see enough of him. We didn't see enough of him, and you know, I think we should be sad about that because he was he was a proper genius. There's another player. Can I add to that as, as well, Go David? On very There's, quickly, Jamie. Um, Ronaldo nine. He was absolutely incredible as well. You know, when you see some of the things he did for Barcelona. And I spent a little bit of time with him doing rehab in, in America. And um, we were doing our trick, trying to come back. It was 2001, I think, at the time. And I'm trying to do rehab. I'm trying to come back from a, a career-threatening injury. And he turns up as well. He'd had his bad knee. And I remember doing everything I had to do to try and get back. They said to do 100, like, you know, squats or whatever, I'd do them. He did about 55, and he had about five people around him, entourage, tapping his head. I thought, well, they will he will never play again. I think he's finished. They will never see Ronaldo get back to that level. I mean, the following year, he won the Golden Boot in the World Cup and was just out of this world. So <laughs> I think it just shows you how good he could have been as well if he'd not had those injuries. And you do need a little bit of luck in football. We need a lot of luck, actually. But his talent was amazing. At the top, <laughs> ahead of Messi and Ronaldo. Now, that's controversial, Merce, and I'll tell you why. Because because Graham has gone with Messi and Ronaldo as his top two. Uh, Jamie yeah. went with Pele at the top of the pile. And Alan himself went with Messi and Ronaldo ahead of Maradona. So why, for you, is Maradona uh, better than anybody else? I, it was when I was growing up, really. I think when I was growing up, it was that era of watching football and I just thought Maradona, he, he went to Napoli, which, was, you know, Graham will tell you, was the hardest league in the world at the time. You know, it was so difficult. You got kicked from pillar to post. It was all about being defensive-minded, where it was hard to score goals. And he took Napoli to, to win the league and then went on to, to win virtually, I think, to win the World Cup virtually on his own. I know he had a couple of good players around him at Argentina, but for me, if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have won the World Cup. And... For me, he's the, he's the best player I've ever seen and I, I still sit with that today. I mean, I know the game's moved on, but I just, you know, this this lad got kicked from pillar to post. I mean, he had to do a lot of it on his own and he's my favourite player. He's, he's my favourite player and he's the best player I've seen. It's, it's only in my opinion. It's only in my opinion. And you've also got Van Basten on that list, Merce. Yeah, I think, I think people have short memories in footballing careers. I think we forget people very quickly and, Again, this lad, I mean, I was fortunate enough to play with Tony Adams for a lorry load of years. And I, he was a top, top defender, Tony Adams. I mean, a proper defender. And when you look back and you, you see what Van Basten done to Tony Adams at the Euros, you've got, you got to stand up and, or sit up and think, this player is unbelievable. I mean, he was called the Prince. I mean, there's not many nicknames like that now, is there? Unless you name yourself it, like the lad who used to play for Portsmouth. But this this lad was named the <laughs> Prince. So, and for me, I, I just think he was a phenomenal player, phenomenal footballer. You know, ripped up the Euros. You know, he could do everything. He was quick. He was strong. He could head the ball, hit both feet. 
And, you know, he was another player when I was growing up. I, I just watched him and I thought, you know, this is that special, special. And how about Maldini, a prince among defenders? Yeah, I mean, phenomenal. I mean, I was fortunate to play against him. And I, I always thought my, a part of my game was being able to see things in a game, you know, and I, I thought I had a, quite a quick brain. And I played against Maldini and I never got a kick. Never got a kick. Everything I did, he was he was he was always there. He always thinking another one, another pass or another interception before me. And and it was an honour to play against him. And I just think sometimes we're so so minded of forwards, and you know it's forward, forward. Best players in the world are forwards, forwards, forwards. But at the end of the day, if you ain't got world class centre halves or world class defenders in your team. It's very, very rare you win absolutely anything. I don't know any team's ever won anything that hasn't got a good defence or a good goalie. So Maldini, for me, deserves to be in my top five. 